Not only is this another startup losing enormous amounts of money, 1.9 billion last year. They've dropped the WeWork's name because We doesn't work. Company continues to burn through hundreds of millions of dollars. Latest woes for WeWork. The company reportedly plans to lay off another 2,000 workers. Last year, one of Silicon Valley's to-be megagiants went ahead to publicly file what was thought to be an S-1 in preparation for a stock market listing. Potential investors had been waiting to buy their shares of the company that embodied a bold vision of changing the world, and it would start with a real estate-ish business and do it by growing in other areas gradually through the years. This was intriguing. The company had a $47 billion valuation, but suddenly, everything came crashing down, all hell broke loose. In a span of six weeks, the CEO had stepped down and given up control of the company and was taken over by the Japanese conglomerate SoftBank that had been the company's biggest investor. SoftBank is essentially paying Newman to step aside. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Let's take a look at it from the beginning. WeWork started as an American commercial real estate company that provides shared workspaces for startups and other enterprises as well as freelancers. It was founded in 2010 by Adam Newman, his spouse Rebecca Newman, and Miguel McKelvey, with headquarters in New York City. As of 2018, the company co-managed over 4 million square meters of rented workspaces. WeWork designs and builds physical and virtual shared workspace solutions for companies and enterprises. WeWork had over 5,000 employees in 280 locations spread across 86 cities and in 32 countries. In 2019, the company was valued at around $47 billion as it filed for an IPO, but since the company had a history of losses, where it lost $2 billion in the previous year, potential investors clearly saw red flags and it led to a heavy scrutinization of its financials, which ultimately resulted in the massive drop of its valuation. Adam Newman, the former CEO and one of the co-founders of the company, is a 40-year-old Navy veteran from Israel who sports the signature hippie look of long, unkempt hair paired with t-shirt and jeans. With his wife, Rebecca, he started WeWork. He was known to work hard and party hard and was notorious among his employees where he fired people after meeting them for a few minutes, saying that he was disappointed by the number of B players the firm had hired during its expansion. As he started his venture and it started to become successful, he began to lead a yet more lavish lifestyle. He bought around five new homes, spending millions of dollars, and spent a few more millions to buy four different apartments in the same building. He bought a Gulfstream jet for WeWork, worth $60 million. The plane was meant to fly around the world covering London, the Dominican Republic, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and was meant to be used by the company, which did not quite serve its purpose as his overbloated expenses started bleeding the company dry. This led to firing 20% of the workforce as WeWork hemorrhaged money. WeWork filed for an IPO before it was making any money. In fact, it was hemorrhaging money due to Adam's exorbitant costs. It's not unheard of for startups to file IPO before they actually make any profits. Uber is a prime example. They filed for an IPO with a warning that it would never make money and to this day hasn't made any profits. What investors see is potential. Potential for growth and acquiring more customers as making a profit takes a back seat. A good example is Amazon. It didn't make any money when it IPO'd in 1999 and made its first quarterly profit in 2001 after the dot-com bubble. But its profits had been subdued until recently as it made investments elsewhere seeking growth while it delayed making a profit. But quite often this surge of money into startups with the hope that it would make money in the future backfires. SoftBank poured $18.5 billion into WeWork. To put this into context, it's more than the entire GDP of Bolivia, a country of 11 million people. The company, up until the morning of August 14, 2019, had been one of the most highly valued startups. It had become the grand symbol of the Silicon Valley's financial freedom of boundless possibilities that reside there. The CEO, Adam Newman, had specifically mentioned that the goal was not to make money or to rent office spaces, but it was to change the world. According to an article from The Guardian, published on December 20th, 2019, Newman had already planned We Sleep to We Sail to We Bank, which, unfortunately, will remain ideas that never saw the face of reality. The case of WeWork was different. Its downfall wasn't because of the investigative journalism that sent Theranos tumbling down and neither was it like the fall of Uber as had been predicted long back. 
the company's fall was the result of something insidious. It was the CEO, Adam Newman, his dealings with the company, and the exploitation of company stocks that he had control over during his reign, which was quite long. WeWork has done most of its business in renting out spaces and providing them in smaller sizes to companies and freelancers according to their needs and for required timeframes. The company usually deals with 15-year leases, but the client can choose a time frame as short as a month. Owing to such a flexible business project, wife Rebecca started a school of her own to leverage yet more assets, and Newman put the inherently flawed ideas of his to good use. But it did not last long. Now to address WeWork's actual journey toward bankruptcy. Let's take a look at the dealings that had been done from when the company first put forward the idea of making the shares public to when they actually went ahead and did it. There had been a multiplicity of factors that had a major role to play in the company's ruin. The primary reason was WeWork's attempt at trying to portray itself as a tech company when its fundamentals were completely real estate. After all, tech can enable a certain portion of the play, but ultimately, it's a real estate company, and real estate companies do not reach such gigantic valuation figures easily. Packaging the offer as a tech player also created a negative sentiment for the investors in the space. Added to this was the highly chaotic way in which the company functioned, with a multi-class stock structure that gave Newman 20 votes to every one vote regular shareholders, which due to investor pressure got reduced to a ratio of 10 to 1 during its S1 filing, still very high. Since the company had a valuation of $47 billion at the time it filed for the IPO, and the same valuation had plummeted more than 70% to around $8 billion before the end of the year, the company, in order to make its shares available to the public, was asked to raise $3 billion from the IPO roadshow they'd planned following its failure in order to get $6 million of investments. It seemed a Herculean task. It was later found out that the homes and the apartments and other properties that Adam had bought had been leased to WeWork and the company was actually paying him. The company had been badly hit by the schemes of its own CEO. Moreover, Newman had the company pay him another $5.9 billion so that he could rebrand the company as We. WeWork later became a part of its parent company called The We Company. He had also gone ahead to whimsically invest WeWork's money in a surfing-based company without any due diligence and lost it all. Newman later went to discuss the matter with their primary investor, Masayoshi Son, CEO of the Japanese conglomerate SoftBank and the highest stakeholder in WeWork. He agreed to invest another $10 million into WeWork. It was done on the purpose of mutual interest, as Newman needed to be able to make the company's shares available to the public, and Sun needed that stamp of approval that he did not indulge in bad investments, as had been evident with the case of Uber, in which Sun had also been a major investor and a major figure. After the company's frivolous dealings were exposed, the investors asked the CEO to step down and the Japanese conglomerate SoftBank took over. The main reason why a company like WeWork with such bloated valuations received huge investments was because of investors' FOMO, fear of missing out. Companies similar to WeWork, like Impact Hub, which was founded in 2005, or Regis, which was founded in 1989, were already in the business of renting out workspaces to startups and enterprises way before WeWork was even founded. All these companies had business plans similar to WeWork, but they did not have a bloated valuation like WeWork. Hype is one of the tech sector's most magical qualities. Like Uber and Lyft, no one can say for sure whether the business actually works. But when the CEO indulges in the spending of company money and frivolous things, it's a big red flag. What seemed to make this year's WeWork stories different and more damaging was the addition of alleged self-dealing and self-enrichment by Newman to the core model of leasing office buildings, transforming them into shared workspaces, providing free beer to tenants, and then counting on a rotating cast of freelancers, venture-funded startups, and some larger corporations to pay rents that could be as short as a month at a time. But Newman's propensity to sell stock and lease buildings he partially owned back to WeWork wasn't news either. It was exposed by the Wall Street Journal last year, before the trouble started. In February of this year, Sandeep Mathrani was appointed the new CEO. So we'll leave it right there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome content. We'll see you next time.